So in uh, part four of Sophia's Last Day, you're looking at really the two masterpieces, so to speak, the two largest projects that we did. And these were done not by students in my class, but students who worked in the Learning Technology Lab, although I spent a great deal of my own time on these as well. Uh, on the right, you see a mock-up of S the Stinson Remick Hall of Engineering. When we started this building, it did not exist yet. Um, all it was was a hole in the ground. And uh, the idea was to create a space where uh, engineering faculty could explore and get a sense of what the building was going to be like when it did open. So let's uh, let's go down and we'll take a look. Um, I made this so you could fly through the front. <laughs> Can't do that on the real building. Um, this uh, actually really looks remarkably like the actual building. Um, some of the colors are not quite right and so forth, but um, it's really remarkably like the actual building. Um, this room um, is uh, a, a sort of a multi-purpose classroom. You can see all the screens on the wall. If you actually walk into this room, it really does look like this. So we created um, this uh, folding wall, which is in the real building. Opens up and closes. And one of our strategies was going to be to um, to provide uh, different layouts of the room so people could see what it would what these rooms would look like set up in different ways. So if I click the green button, the tables come out and set up one way. If I take the r uh, do the red button, they come out a different way. We never went any farther with this because the faculty really were the engineering faculty um, just had lots of other things to do and were not. Uh, did not become particularly engaged with this project. Um, over here you can see the clean room. Uh, so <laughs> the flooring has, uh, some of the flooring has disappeared here. But this is a, a, a really a very high-tech uh, room. And uh, so here the idea was uh, this is a place where you sort of get dressed uh, to go into the clean room. And we were hoping to create uh, this neat little uh, effect where you walk in and you could hear the air getting sucked out as you then entered the clean room. But we didn't get that far, unfortunately. We spent a, a fantastic amount of time on this space. I'm going to show you um, how a little bit about how we did this. Well, I thought I was going to. I believe that there are some remaining pieces where you can see how this was done. Yes. So if you look over to my to to the right of the screen, I believe that you can see, and perhaps underneath here you'll be able to see again. Give me a second. Right. So you can see a little bit of the um, the floor plan. I'm going to get rid of some more here so you can get a better sense. This is all going to be disappearing shortly anyway. So underneath this you can see the floor plan. This was really tricky to figure out. I got a copy of the floor plan and turned it into uh, textures, sm uh, graphic files. It took three attempts uh, to come up with the right scale uh, so that I could lay this down on the virtual ground and begin to build the building on top of it. One of the things I noticed was that my um, avatar didn't fit through doors. Um, and I, when I did some uh, looking at the scaling of this, I realized that my avatar was like 10 feet tall. <laughs> so I adjusted his height eventually. So you can see how this was built up from uh, floor plans on the ground. We really spend a tremendous amount of time on this space. Here's a chapel. This was never finished. 
um, in our version of the building, of course, the real one was finished. And most of what we did was on the main floor. We did not um, fill out the, the upper floors. But quite a bit of work involved. As you can see, this was up um, long before the building was, and so we had these renderings. And the building, in fact, does look like this. 